There's a couple of things, actually three things, that concern me about the new Toyota Prius. First of all, what we're in, this is a 2023. It's new in that I haven't had it that long, and really, I'm not sure why Toyota's even come out with a 2024. You couldn't even get this until late 2023, so I don't know, who knows. But anyway, let me say, the car, first off, has been spot on. No issues with it, and I'm talking about nothing. Fit, finish, mechanical, electrical, comfort, everything is awesome in this car. But nonetheless, there are still three things that are in the back of my mind. One that I just kind of realized today. I mean, I kind of knew this because it's how Toyota does things, but I'm talking about the oil change. I made a video, I was running through some of the features on the car, all of the buttons right across the dash area. Check that out if you want to know more about all of the buttons there. But one of them that I went through was the odometer or trip meter button. And one of the functions of that is it'll bring up a little wrench that shows you when the Prius is due for an oil change. Now, Toyota, they always follow the 10,000 mile philosophy, right? And it's no different with the Toyota Prius. I have like 9,000 some miles left before it says I'm supposed to get an oil change. And what concerns me about that is the way the, the Prius works. It has a combustion engine. Of course, that engine kicks on whenever you do certain things in the car, when the battery gets low or whatever. And it kicks on fairly frequently. I mean, if you get on the gas, I have the all-wheel drive, so if I make a turn, that rear drive motor kicks in and the engine fires up. That means that it's constantly on and off and it gets hot. And what causes oil to break down? Heat. Heat is what causes engine oil to break down, as well as dirt and stuff from the engine, of course. But since the engine is constantly turning off and on, one would think that the engine is going to burn a little bit hotter or run a little bit hotter, uh, and the oil is going to be a little bit hotter. I would think that would mean that you should change the oil more frequently. Am I going to follow Toyota's uh, recommendation of 10,000 miles? No, I'm not. I'm going to change probably on the first change right around 1,000, 1,500, maybe something like that. And then after that, I'll change the oil every 5,000 miles. I might even consider every 3,000 because of the way that the Toyota Prius works. I haven't decided yet. But I think 10,000 is way too long. I know today's engine oils are better and they're designed to last longer and all that good stuff but still I guess I'm a little old school that kind of bothers me a little bit about the Toyota Prius next up I've mentioned this before so we're not going to dwell on it but is the lack of a spare tire you know it's peace of mind I think I've never had a, a flat tire so I guess if one were to argue they'd say well gee you've never had a flat tire in your decades of driving why do you need a spare now because it's when you don't have one that you need one, right? I don't want to be out in the middle of anywhere and uh, and have my tire blow for some reason, such a, a blow or a failure that's not fixable by the gunk that they give you. I have gunk in the trunk. It's that little fix-a-flat kit that Toyota includes in lieu of a spare tire. You have to have the perfect blowout or perfect failure for that stuff to work. I mean, blow a big hole in the side of your tire, that stuff's not going to work. Even if you get just a puncture in the wrong part of the tire, it's not going to work. Plus, it ruins your TPMS monitors. You're going to have to get new ones because it squirts a whole bunch of gunk inside your tire. So now you're going to have the added expense of a new kit, because once you use that kit, it's done. A TPMS sensor, a new tire, and maybe a wheel even depending upon what kind of failure you have and how much damage is done. For instance, if you're, say, on a, a busy road somewhere or whatever, and you can't just stop your car in the middle of the road, you have to get it out of the way, right? So you might have to drive on that completely flat tire for a little bit to be safe. And I would think that's an argument. You know, Toyota seems to tout this safety philosophy. We've got all these different nanny functions in the car. You know, it won't let you do this or that or whatever, or it sounds an alarm or 
flashes your screen or whatever but yet they'll let you drive down a road on a wheel or not that is actually being destroyed by continuing to run the car due to a flat and they certainly couldn't tell you to just sit there in the middle of a busy road let's say it's pitch black dark out maybe on a back road somewhere and you're stopped in the middle of the road or there's not enough berm on the side and you can't pull off I would think that's a safety concern and reason enough to include some sort of a spare anyway. I wonder if Toyota or any car manufacturer has ever been sued because of something like that. I don't know. Lastly, the battery. How do you charge the battery or how do you put a maintenance minder or tender on the battery? Let's say, for example, that you're going to be away from the car for a while. Maybe you hit the lottery and you're going to go stay in Hawaii for a couple, three months. If you hit the lottery, this probably isn't a big concern. But let, for sake of argument, let's just say you're going to be away for a while. How do you keep the system charged? I've looked through the manual and I haven't been able to find anything that tells me how to hook up some sort of a battery minder or a maintenance minder to keep the battery topped off so that it doesn't go dead while the car is setting or sitting rather and the reason that is confusing to me I guess is because the car does have a battery underneath the back seat it's a hybrid it's an EV it's an electric type vehicle right so does that battery once it starts to run down does it start to draw charge from the 12 volt battery you know the starter battery or not will it just go dead by itself and then recharge once you get going to protect the other battery I don't know it's a concern for me and and really the reason is because I am going to be taking a trip soon a few months and I may not be taking the Toyota Prius I might take something else I haven't decided yet but if I don't take the Prius it's going to sit for a, a while maybe a couple three months I don't I don't know how long but how do I maintain the battery while I'm gone? Do you actually have to go to the lengths of removing the battery, setting it somewhere, and hooking a tender up to it that way? What a drag that would be. What a hassle when you should be able to just hook up under the hood or something. I mean, that's the whole idea, I think, behind having these battery minders or battery maintenance tenders, right? So that's a concern to me as well. I don't know. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Does any of that stuff bother you? Have you thought about it? Or now that I've put that thought in your head, you're going to panic. I didn't mean to do it. I apologize. But leave a comment. Let me know. I'd just be curious. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.